Welcome back to the 10th episode of Gnomely, my gnome area restricted Iron Man. Using only these areas, the end goal of my account is to complete Monkey Madness 2, leaving only to complete its prerequisites. I recently finished using XP lamps to get my hunter level up to 3, and then trained all the way up to 75 to catch magpie implings. This allowed me to upgrade every single gear slot bar my cape and my boots, meaning I can train combat much faster than with the gear that I had before. My current goal is level 66 cooking. Using a chef's delight I caught from a gourmet impling, I can boost from 66 to 70 and complete Recipe for Disaster, the next prequest on my list. My current method of cooking training is to kill zombies in the maze dungeon, collect the fishing bait and fish pike in the stronghold river. As it stands I currently need to collect 3600 fishing bait from zombies before I'll have enough pike for 66. That's a lot of bait, so it's going to take a lot of hours of combat even with my new gear upgrades. So let's take a look at how it's going in the zombie cave. Okay, this random event is actually very important, so let's go do it. The reason I need one of these random events is because I need to get a rotten tomato. And these guys throw them at me, but I'm not sure if they throw them and they appear on the ground, which is an issue. I need a rotten, I re I need a rotten tomato for Recipe for Disaster, and I'm really hoping one of these appears on the ground from the tramp throwing it at me. That'll be really, really helpful and really nice, so... I'm just gonna wait a while and see if any of them appear. I've got an inventory space, luckily. If I had a full inventory and couldn't drop something, I would be really annoyed, but let's see if I can get a rotten tomato from here. Alright, looks like we're not getting a rotten tomato from this one, which is unfortunate. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get one now. That's the first milestone out of the way, we just crossed 1,000 out of 3,600 fishing bait. Alright, so I just got these two Eyes of Newt from some zombies, and we are going to pop these in here, make some attack potions, and get ourselves 11 Herblore. You can now clean Terramin. Damn right I can. Let's see how many I've got in the bank right here. I've got 49 grimy Terramins, so let's just really... Where's my XP drops? Let's just slap out all of these. I think things are looking good here. Are we going to pull ourselves 12? 12 herb lore, there it is. That's great, now I can make strength potions. And we're just going to do that really quick. And we should get 14 herb lore, if that's enough limp -rits. I'm not sure if it is, but we'll definitely be close if it's not. Man, there's 13. I had no reason to worry. We're gonna get 14 just this inventory. Hell yeah, there's 14 Herblore. That's amazing. That is the Herblore requirement for Watchtower completed. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And now I can make strength potions. The, the XP is gonna be insane. That's really awesome. And lastly, there's 17 Herblore. I'm out of Limpwort Roots now, so I won't be getting any more, any more levels for a while, but from 10 to 17 just like that that's cool nice there's level 18 herblor and there is level 38 farming that's great um in one more level i'll be able to plant the curry trees by boosting with a garden pie and i should have enough of those seeds to be able to get to 42 and then boost again so i can get my maple log which is really handy i've also decided that i'm going to swap over to hill giants for a little while for combat xp because they give about double the combat XP per hour as zombies do. I'm getting about 12.5k per hour from zombies, but I can get over 20 at hill giants. I want to rush 60 attack, and I can do that in about 4 hours as opposed to 10 if I kill hill giants. They also drop limpwort roots, which are pretty good for training herblore, and the prayer XP will be quite nice. Once I get 60, I'm going to go get the dragon scimitar, then go back to zombies. It's going to make a huge difference. My max hit's going to go up from about 9 to 13. And I'll be able to two hit the zombies much more consistently, get much faster fishing bait, and be able to do the grind a lot quicker. But for now, I just want to get 60 attack done. I've been here for three kills and I get a long bone. Are you kidding me? One in 400. Thanks, game. Are you shitting me? That's 10 kills later. Another long bone. What? What? 
Okay, I need another. That, that's probably rarer than a curved bone, which is 1 in 5k. Which is probably rarer than a giant champion scroll, which is 1 in 5k. What? I need, to, I need to do the math and find out the odds of this. What in the fuck? I'm probably doing my maths wrong right here. But, um, calculator's showing me 1 in 16,000 of getting a 1 in 400 drop and then getting it 10 kills later again. That literally could have been like a dragon midhelm or spear or something, but nope. Nice, there's level 56 attack. Fifty seven attack, we're getting real close now. Four and two hundred and fifty kills. Bam, there's fifty nine attack. We are one level away from the dragon semi. There's level forty six prayer and sixty four combat. Alright everyone, this is in a moment that I have been very excited for. BAM! There's 60 attack. 64 combat as well. I am extremely excited to announce that I will be now training with a Dragon Simi. So, let's put this dagger away and let's go get that scimitar, that scimitar as fast as we can, because I am really excited to use it. And there it is, that is the final drop of fishing bait. Very happy I can get out of here now. I've been here for many hours, about three days worth of killing zombies down here. Got some really good combat stats out of it, of course, got the D simi, got some nice hit point levels, got some nice prayer levels as well. Let's get out of here and let's start a much more relaxing and much more enjoyable fishing grind so I can get recipe for disaster done. Yay, just got 20 herb lore and missed the level completely because I buried a bone. But that's cool, I can now Oof. finally clean these Haralanders. Alright, we've got 54 Haralanders here. Let's see if we get 21 herb lore from cleaning these. Didn't get a level, unfortunately, but these are going to be some great herb lore XP. I can make them into energy potions once I get the level, and they're going to be very helpful yeah. and great XP as well. That's actually a pretty decent percentage. Normally I get around mid 60s, but what are we getting from this maze? Wow! Okay, that's an incredible reward. 234 chaos, 117 death runes, no feathers unfortunately, but that is a humongous amount of elemental runes.
Hey, there it is. That is 66 cooking. That's the level we want. I've got a chef's delight in the bank so I can use that to boost up to 70 and cook the required food item for recipe for disaster. That's very exciting. That's very exciting. I can't wait to go do the quest now. Look at that, only three pike left. I'll just leave them. We now have 5k pike in the bank. I don't think I'm gonna run out of these ever. That's a lifetime supply and they're not very useful food. So they're only really good for training. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna train that much. So they'll probably have these for a long time. Uh, better food items I will be able to get later on. Like I got these sharks and these lobsters from implings and so on. And when I get 76 fishing, I may be able to fish sharks. But anyway. I'm going to get started working on Recipe for Disaster now, and I need to make my first trip to Rasselo right now, because I need to buy a green man's ale from him. I have a Eye of Newt ready to go, uh, if I can find it, where is that thing? Here we go, 10 actually, wow, okay, yeah, that's how many zombies I killed, they're 1 in 128, so having 10 of those is pretty crazy. So we've got that, and we need a green man's ale, and I need to make a fruit blast, so I will make that right away. And I also need a rotten tomato. And now that's where the issue is. I thought I was going to be able to get a rotten tomato from the the random event. What's it called? The pillory random event. I thought I was going to be able to get a rotten tomato from there. So I got the random event a couple of weeks ago. And I was sitting there waiting for rotten tomatoes thrown at me by the tramp to appear on the floor. But they, ne they never did. They didn't appear. You can't get it from the random event. I was very wrong about that and I even had players throw Rotten Tomatoes at me and they didn't show up but I didn't think that would work because I'm an Iron Man anyway but I'm gonna have to go to Yanil and get one because it's a literal requirement for Recipe for Disaster and I'm aware that it is outside of the area exception but if I had known this when I started the account last year I would have brought it with me in the first place so I am gonna have to go get one of those and then I'm gonna go do Recipe for Disaster a cook's quest and then freeing King Awawoge so let's go make a fruit blast. There we go. There's the fruit blast ready to go. And can we make the dirty blast before we start the quest? Huh. Okay. There we go. That's kind of funny, actually. Um, all right. Let's go and hit up Rasselo now. Alright, my homie, I've been waiting a whole year and a half to come talk to you, a bit less. So let's look at his wares, green man's ale, four coins, that's perfect. We'll buy that, and I might hop around and buy a few more just to get them. Oh shit, he's only got two limestone bricks in stock. That's funny actually, because I was hoping to use those for construction later on. Um, this is going to make him a lot more painful to buy in bulk, even though I still can buy them in bulk, so I may as well pick that up while I'm here. How much is a feminine cloak? 500, you know what? Why not upgrade the cape now that we're at Rasselo, you know? Why not? we got a nice cool pink cloak now. I might, I, now I have a, a little bit of choice with what I want to wear. That's kind of funny. And let's see what else this dude has. I don't think he has anything else useful right now. Um, blue hat, I can get that at the Gnome Stronghold, so that's no issue. Uh, desert boots. Okay, these are some of the coolest fashion scape in the game, so I'm absolutely going to pick up a pair of these. Yeah, look at those. Mine and my, my cream boots suit better, of course, but I'm glad to get the desert boots now, just because they're some, one of the coolest items in old school RuneScape. And come here, you... Nothing else, I think, is of any use. Paperists and spinach rolls are of no use. Cocktail guides I can get. Don't need a toy horsey. Don't need an instruction manual. Don't need a keg of beer, even though those will be kind of cool if I ever want to celebrate anything. And a bailing bucket, no use to me whatsoever. Alright, so I'm just going to grab a few more Green Man's Ales, and then I'm going to get over to Yanil and get me a rotten apple from the pillory. I forgot to bring an axe, that was quite dumb. Now I can't get back to Gnome Stronghold quickly. That's cool, we're going to buy this rotten tomato here. It feels bad breaking the rules, but we got to do what we got to do to get Monkey Madness too. Alright, so now let's head home. I think this will be the first ever time I've used the home teleport spell on this account. And I'm only using this so I don't have to walk all the way back Lum back to Lumbridge. Normally I wouldn't allow myself the use of this teleport, but for the uh, the purpose of completing this quest, I think that it's fine. Alright, let's go and do Recipe for Disaster. We already completed Cook's Assistant before I locked my account to the Gnome Stronghold, uh, back in Episode 1 no less. So we'll be all good to just start it off right away. And let's just do that. 
That's exactly what the cook wanted, mate. We've got our dirty blast. I don't think we can drink it, but I'm not going to risk it. Here you go, brother. Congratulations. You have completed another cook's quest, and I am awarded an invitation to the most amazing feast that I will ever see. I absolutely must go through into the dining room, and I can't wait, bro. Let's head on in. Damn, this guy's got nerve to kick him. Here he is. Let's ju only inspect our woga. That's the only one we need. Alright. Recipe for disaster. Let's have a look at this. Alright, monkey ambassador. Alright, so let's head back off to Apatol. And we are back. Perfect. Let's get going with the quest. And apparently we need a pistol. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. We have a problem, folks. I need a pistol. And I dropped mine. Because I was making it an item requirement from Enlightened Journey. I was going to lock it behind the quest Enlightened Journey. Problem is, I need 20 quest points to do Enlightened Journey, and I was planning to get the 20th quest point from this quest. That's a big issue. I think the plans are going to have to change now. That's really frustrating. So, the, the next quest I'm going to have to do is going to be Watchtower. But I can't do that because I need 93 Hunter to get Dragon Bones. Can I do the Eyes of Glufry? No, because I need 45 farming, and 46 magic, and 5 construction. I can get all of those, it will just take time. Okay, so what I need to work on now is 5 construction, and 46 magic. Damn it, that ruins everything. That really just put a damper on everything, unfortunately. But it's cool, we're just going to change tech. We're just going to change course. Alright, time to change tech drastically. I need to now work on 46 magic. I have a handful of runes. I've got these mines here, I've got these bodies here. So I can curse splash with these, which is great. I can cast strike spells with these, bolt spells with these. Hopefully I have enough runes to get to 46 magic. Now I just need to figure out what I'm going to be training it on. Alright, let's get out our wonderful wizard robe outfit. I don't think any of this gives a magic bonus except for the hat. Plus three. We're still going to rock this anyway because I've got to be a magical wizard as I cast my spells. Let's get a power amulet. I do believe this gives a magic bonus. Cool, plus nine. I don't have a staff yet, I don't think. Okay, I have no staff of any kind. I could go hunting eclectics for the one in 100 drop, but I'm not interested. Um, I want to cast fire strike. 
and I want to curse splash so all of these runes are going to be used I can cast fire strike and I have to manually cast it because I don't have a staff that's wonderful and then once I get 19 I can cast cursing at the most XP out of my runes and I can I have unlimited elemental runes effectively because I can just buy them from the rune shop cheaply it's just the catalic runes like body uh, and chaos and death and lore no I can buy lore everything else I don't have access to unfortunately so let's get to training some magic I wish I could wear these but I need 40 magic before I can do that um, they'll be a nice glove upgrade when I get 40 magic so let's go I'm, I'm, I'm keen to get some levels all right let's see how this goes okay this is the wonder range so that's okay it'll be easy to safe spot these guys 18 magic one away from curse now 32 magic hey there's 33 magic which is telegrab unlocked I don't think that's gonna be a very useful spell but the thing with telegrab is it's one of the few spells that I can buy all the runes needed to cast it law and air rune and can actually cast it within my restrictions of course I could buy the teleports for Varrock Lumbridge and Felidor but I can't cast those for obvious reasons but telegrab is basically my only buyable magic XP if I want to get body runes mind runes chaos runes death nature anything else to train with I have to get them through drops law is the only non-elemental room that the rune shop on Apatol sells so having access to telegrab does mean I shouldn't have to worry about magic training as long as I have the money for it which is pretty cool this is how I'm training magic right now um, it's pretty slow hey there's 34 magic but um yeah just casting weaken and then a curse on each gnome I'm not bothering with confused because the amount of XP you get per body rune is just so minimal and shoot the gnome to finish it off normally I one hit it and then move on to the next one I don't have enough melee armor to get my magic bonus negative enough to always splash unfortunately that would, would be nice but um can't have everything when you're an area locked iron man so I'm not actually sure I'm gonna have enough runes to get the magic level I want unfortunately but we're gonna keep going and hopefully we get close enough and if I don't I'm gonna have to be world hopping a lot and selling a lot of those extra bows in the bank for law runes because yeah I'm gonna need 40 magic if I want to get my construction up for eyes of Gluffrey. this is very easy to say spot this will be chill and can't wait to get 40 magic so I can finally start the construction grind but there is a catch actually so I can't start it as soon as I get 40 but this is great, this is so much better than Fire Strike. Look at that, just taking him out. Hey, 36 magic coming in. 37 magic coming in. Hey, 38 magic. Yeah, 39 magic, and that's Crumble Undead unlocked, but it's pretty useless. And with that, we are all out of Chaos Runes, unfortunately, but I'm quite close to 40 magic now, so it's gonna be a quick journey, just finishing it off with Curse and Weaken, and then I'm gonna be able to teleport to House, which is exciting. And with our final cast of Weaken, there is level 40 magic. That's an amazing milestone. Teleport to House is now unlocked, and I can now wear Mystic, Enchanted, and Elder Chaos Druid robes and Skeletal Armor. None of those I'll ever have access to, except Mystic, of course, from Implings, but they forget to mention that I can now equip my Split Bark gauntlets, which is great, and I don't even think they show up on the character model. Can you even see those? Yeah. So what stats do these have? plus two magic and a few nice defense bonuses which are a bit better than some leather gloves so hey new best in slot gloves which is dope uh yes i can now cast teleport to house and go inside my player and house for the first time since i bought it in march of 2019 which means i can start training my construction and i can get it up to level five for the eyes of gluff request i've just been making some molten glass to make some vials with so i can train herb lore later and while i'm here i thought i'd grab the monkey guard bones um just so i don't have to make another trip here and i've never killed these on this account before i think these stats are quite low for taking on one of these guys honestly and i don't have any food so this guy's poison might hurt a little bit but we'll see how this goes yeah let's get it started
Nice. There's 26 herb lore, and that's a good level to get because I can now make energy potions, which are going to be extremely useful for what I'm about to do, which is gnome restaurant. I have a lot of Haralanders, I think the herb is. Yes, in the bank, and I can very easily get chocolate dust because they sell chocolate bars over at the food store up here. And you may be thinking, wait, didn't you drop your pestle and mortar? So how are you going to get chocolate dust from that? Well, fear not, my friends, because there was an update made into the game a couple of years ago now, I think, which put energy potions into the free game. And they didn't have a pestle and mortar to make chocolate dust with, so they decided they would let you use a knife to do it, which is great. Which is really, really great for me. So yeah, let's get some energy potions made. I have, yes, 91 Haralanders. So that's 91 energy pot three doses I can make. I've got plenty of vials of water here to go for them. So let's see what level I get from all these herbs. Well, it turns out I could have just bought chocolate dust anyway. So knife not needed. And the dust is way cheaper. But I'm still going to buy the, the bars just to speed this up a lot. Because world hopping is a pain. Fletching a chocolate bar, now that's something you don't see every day. That looks real interesting. Thirty herbal. Useless potion. Hmm, 31 herbal. And that's our last lot of energy potions made, which is great. So, I'm gonna get right into some gnome restaurant minigame now. Alright, now that I have the magic level for house teleport, I'm gonna be able to get to my POH finally, but I need a way out. I need a way to get back to the gnome stronghold without breaking any of my area restrictions. I can't use minigame teleports and I can't just teleport straight back out normally with a home teleport because that's out of my area restrictions. So, what I'm going to have to do is grind out some grand tree seed pods, which normally are completely never used ever unless you have the royal one from Monkey Manus 2, which I don't have right now for obvious reasons. I'm going to need to get like a decent handful of them at least to get level 5 construction. I'm not sure how many charges each they give. If they give 5 charges each, I'll only need 1. If they give 1 charge each, I'll need about 5. I can't remember how it works, so I'll wiki that in a minute. But yeah, uh, it's going to take a little while to get to grips with this minigame. Luckily I've got energy potions now, which are really going to help. That was a great thing to get from my, all my herbal gains from zombies. But yeah, let's get to work on some gnome restaurant and see how it goes. Wingstone, where's he? Just north of the Agility Pyramid. Okay, he is outside of my area restrictions. And what we are going to do is I won't be able to do it. There we go. I now have a five minute wait. This is going to be a great time. Okay, here we go. Captain Deacon. This is one of my exception ones. The last exception I wish to make for myself is Captain Deacon. This gnome is located quite outside my restrictions, the duel arena no less, but he is the only gnome capable of rewarding both the gnome scarf and the gnome goggles that I have access to. Cosmetically, these two items will fit the theme of the account splendidly, and I most certainly wish to have them. I will drop any reward Captain Derekin tips me outside of these two items, and once I have them I will cease to deliver to him. This is great, this is my first shot at the gnome scarf or goggles, which is great. I'm gonna drop uh, anything he gives me other than those items, even if it is a seed pod, because I need it. This should unlock a music track. There we go. Haven't been here before. Here's your boy. Alright bro, hit us up. Nope. Unlucky. But that's fine, we'll drop those because he's outside of our area restrictions. And let's go back and hopefully we get another decent task. Because it took me an hour to get that task, just skipping and waiting and skipping and waiting. Not very efficient or fast, so hopefully this time gate doesn't slow us down like by multiple days. Because that would really stink. Because I'm really just trying to get this video out. And here's the other gnome glider that I'm going to deliver to, because it's by the shipyard. Awesome, what did he even want again? Short green guy. Ah, yeah, the, the guy in my comments suggested I make these, so let's see how much XP one of these gives. Slice 
that poor there we go done I don't even look at how much XP that was to tell you the truth but 90 XP from the final XP drop so yeah that would have been pretty quick I guess because that's like cooking one whole pike but I could have just done it as many times as I needed alright so let's give this to Mr. Clem Foodle oh an uncut diamond okay cheers buddy that's two back-to-back -back tasks that I am allowing myself to do. Come on, let's go for a third. Come on, King Bol Bolrin, you're thirsty, aren't you? You need a drink. Or you're hungry. I don't care. Just give me an order. Well, that's cool. I guess this might be semi-useful. Bleemage, which one's him? Nope, never lucky. Perfect, that's one I can do quite easily. Let's get that drunk dragon going. Bread topaz. Is that any use to me? I don't think it is. Maybe I could make some of the slayer jewellery with this uh, in the future once I get the bracelet mold out of my house. So actually that's not terrible, as long as I don't crush the gem of course. Another one. Um, I should probably do my research before I spend two hours doing gnome restaurant for no reason. Turns out that the only gnomes that are capable of handing me the Grand Tree Seed Pod are outside of my area restrictions. That means I can't get a Grand Tree Seed Pod and I don't have a teleport out of my POH back to the gnome stronghold again which is a really big problem because I need to level my construction so I can do the eyes of Gluffrey if I can't go to my house I'm going to have to lamp it from 1 to 5 and I've been wasting my lamps on thieving like an idiot because I thought that was going to be a pain in the ass requirement so with that being said could deliver to Penwi which is a gnome on Karamja. He's just he's just west of the gnome glider. He is one of the gnomes that gives the trees seed pod and means I could get one, but at the same time, that's just breaking my area restrictions again, which I don't need to do because I can just get it other ways even if it takes longer. We're not supposed to be taking shortcuts here. So what I'm going to have to do is put both Eyes of Gluffrey on hold and put Recipe for Disaster on hold. And put Enlightened Journey on hold because of that. The next quest in my lineup is Watchtower. But the issue is, I need a Dragon Bone to complete Watchtower quest. And the only way I can get a Dragon Bone is by catching a Dragon Impling at 93 Hunter. And I'm about one sixth of the way there. I believe it's six mil, six and a half mil XP for 93. No, it's probably like 7.2 mil. Or something like that. So, I've got a long hunter grind coming up. My plans have been slapped around quite ridiculously this last episode. I'm not going to lie to you. It's it's a bit of a shame because I was hoping to get some quests done to end the video with that. But um, it's not going to happen. I think I'm going to have to go back to the falconry spot and spend like a month training hunter there before I can continue with the quests which is uh, pretty pretty rough but uh, that's why we're here boys and girls and I'm not giving up just because of a 93 hunter requirement so let's go let's get this thing done No way, it actually finally died. What you just watched there was damn near 17 minutes of combat training on that monkey guard. And yeah, I got about 5k plus XP from that one kill. Um, I was averaging 22k XP an hour, which is actually pretty good considering I can only normally kill zombies and hobgoblins. Yeah, 
that took a while. That took a long while. But I finally got the bones, and I'm not going to be doing that again for a while, so let's go turn these molten glass into vials now. So guys, I'm sorry for the wait, and I hope you enjoyed watching me get bashed around by my own account. Um, I really got thrown for a loop this episode, but that's all part of the fun. Uh, I'm glad I managed to get this episode out when I did, because it's getting a little harder to make these again, for obvious reasons. The account is getting to a slightly higher level than it used to be, so leveling it up is taking longer, the goals and the grinds are getting longer, and I've got a bit less time than I did before, so... Getting these out is going to take a little bit longer every time, but I'm still going to be consistently working on them, so don't worry about that. Um, in terms of the 93 Hunter grind, I do have another potential way of getting around that teleport out of my house option uh, issue. I could go for 75 crafting and train my Slayer until I unlocked Slayer rings. Those will be my most convenient teleport back to the stronghold pre Monkey Madness 2 because Slayer rings are very cheap to make and they give 8 charges for 8 teleports back to the Slayer cave which will be very good. It depends on what I feel like doing. I could train Hunter one day, I could train Combat another day. I need 85 Combat before I can start training Slayer, and the Slayer grind is going to be a bit different. Um, I still have to figure out what I'm going to do with that, but I'll, I'll be working out what I will do once I get my first task and see where we are. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in episode 11 of Gnomely.